Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Uh, today's video was going to be a patch test um, of the batches of paw balm that I made thus far. However, I ran into a little bit of a bump in the road and um, I'm gonna go right into the video so you'll see uh, basically what went wrong with the product and what I'm gonna be doing moving forward. So thanks for tuning in. Question of the day is, what vegan recipes or vegetarian recipes have you tried that are delicious? Please share them with me in the comments below. Let's get into it. And just so Sasha can say hi, although she's snoring right now. <laughs> so basically what happened was my batch of paw balm that I made on March 17th, so that would be the paw balm that I made in the second video um, in this series. I'm only just now opening it since uh, sealing them and putting them away on March 17th. And when I opened it, big shock, <laughs> there is a whole bunch of little specks and patches. It basically looks like a Petri dish. Throwback to microbio. Anyway. Clearly, there's something growing in here, and so you saw my process starting with the first video where I washed everything and then sanitized everything, and from top to bottom, I kept everything clean, so I guess, you know, I was hoping the formulation wouldn't really require an antimicrobial or a preservative, but I might have to do some research and introduce something like that. So that will be the next step. Um, and so brief PSA on preservatives, because I know there's a they have a bad, 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 bad rap these days. Most of the time people want to find skincare products that have completely natural ingredients. All the ingredients are things that you can pronounce. And um, I wanted that too, but clearly that's not good enough. Uh, somewhere along the line, you know, bacteria was introduced or a microbe of some kind was introduced and it's growing in there. Um, I highly doubt that's just re-solidified shea butter, you know, it shouldn't look like that because for the ones that I made just yesterday, that I was so excited to test for you, uh, for the ones I made just yesterday, they don't look like that, see, it's just smooth beautiful solidified you know that's how it's supposed to look so when i saw that i was like oh my gosh it's like i made an agar <laughs> but that's what this is all about experimenting testing it out and seeing where i have to pivot so i have to pivot again i'll have to update my formulation to include some antimicrobials hopefully a single broad spectrum antimicrobial um, or, you know, I'll just do some more research to see what else is out there. But back to the PSA, you know, there's a lot of antimicrobials or preservatives that have a bad rap, particularly parabens. And so the reason why people are so against parabens is because some information came out about parabens causing cancer. But what people should understand is that a lot of these compounds or um, chemicals that are known to cause cancer or what have you actually don't cause cancer until they're used at a certain level below a certain threshold they are safe to use they're not mutagenic or carcinogenic um however when information like that is taken out of context and you spread that information to people who don't have like a science and genetics background then you know the it, the, it gets blown up into a different context than what it should be used in but you know that's reality so if i take off my biology and genetics cap and put on my businesswoman cap the connotation that people hold is going to affect whether or not people buy the product you know so at the same time that i want to inform you and um try to debunk some of these misconceptions I also have to make sure I do the proper research to know what's gonna sell and um, I can find something hopefully that is a broad spectrum preservative antimicrobial that doesn't have such a you know 
a, a scary name attached to it at this point because p people kind of are very much for a list of ingredients where they can pronounce every single ingredient. So I'll do my best to stick to that because that was my original intention, but it depends on what the literature says. Um, but there should be some blend of essential oils or some blend of an herbal uh, oil that will keep bacteria, molds, and fungi at bay. And that should also be safe for cats and dogs because, for example, tea tree oil, you know, is poisonous to cats and dogs. So that wouldn't be something that I think about employing in the formulation. Um, even if it's only poisonous past a certain level, but people will see the tea tree oil and go, oh my gosh, why would you put tea tree oil in that? So that's the reality of it. So I'll have to do my research uh, and make the best decision going forward. And then I'll have to order the ingredients and start the batches uh, over again. Because at the moment, as you can see, the ones that I just made yesterday, they don't have any of that growth, but I just made them yesterday. The ones that I made March 13th or March 17th, it's already been like two and a half weeks, but they were sitting, they were sitting sealed in my little shelf that I got just for my skincare stuff. So it's separate from everything else, but clearly, you know, something's growing in it. So I at one point was thinking about doing a part of this series where I show what happens if you put water in the product since it doesn't have a my, uh, antimicrobial. I was thinking like, okay, if people use this on their dogs and say you just got finished washing your dog so your hands are a little damp and you decide to put paw balm on while your dog's skin is still damp, is that little bit of moisture on your finger gonna cause growth in the product if it doesn't have an antimicrobial or any sort of preservative in it? I was kind of gonna test that, but um, I didn't even put water in it <laughs> and it already grew something. So uh, like I said, this is an experiment and I'm glad that you guys are along for the ride. I appreciate your viewership. I appreciate your patience as we do these tests and see what happens. Um, but I am sad I didn't get to do the patch test, but I will be updating you when I can. Um, you know, but in terms of the changes in the formulation that I made, what I can tell you is that I made those changes in the formulation based on some competitive analysis. I looked at the paw bombs that are already on the market. I looked at what makes them great, what people don't like about them, and then I just went back to like the science of it and the ingredients that are really, really good and nourishing for dry skin, for damaged skin, and things of the like, and found a really interesting combination of ingredients that I believe will be effective. I'm really confident that it'll work if only we can get to the point where I can actually swatch it and test it. Dang, I was so excited. I was like, oh, it's gonna be like one of those um, makeup hauls where you're like, you get a new product and then you you do a swatch right there. And then I show you on my skin, like a, like a skincare vlogger. Is it hard to get it out of the container? Or does it glide and melt on your hand right away? Cause I did try a few different uh, ratios of oil to wax as well. You know, I wanted to show all that stuff, but oh, back to the drawing board. Um, so it happens, but next week's video, hopefully we'll be resuming the testing, um, but that's contingent upon how long it takes me to do the research and how long it takes for the ingredients to come in. So thank you for your patience. Uh, please, while you're here, check out some of the other videos in this vlog series if you haven't already. The fourth video was a lighthearted vlog about me and Sasha chilling and messing around. But anyway, <laughs> Like I said, this is all about experimenting. This is all about figuring it out as we go. So thanks for sticking along on the ride. Please comment below if you know any really good vegan or vegetarian recipes to try out. I would like to try them. Um, otherwise, I will see you guys next week. Uh, thank you very much for your engagement. Bye-bye.